In this video, we're going to be doing a relatively short overview of the American College Sports Medicines or ACSM's metabolic equations for various exercises. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, so we have this table here. We have our activities that are um, that the ACSM has equations they recognize for. So we have walking, running, leg cycling, arm cycling, and stepping. Uh, there are equations for other types of exercise like the elliptical machines that you can find out in the research literature. Um, but the equations aren't quite as high quality as these ones, so the ACSM doesn't include them in their, their typical textbooks. Um, for each of these equations, we have the total metabolic cost in um, VO2 or oxygen consumption units, and these are relative oxygen consumption units, so milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body mass per minute. And then on that is the, the VO2 is on one side of the equation, then you have the equal sign, then you have the horizontal component plus the vertical component plus the resting component. And that's how all of these equations are set up. All right, so let's quickly go over the walking e equation here. So we have VO2 equals uh, the horizontal component of 0.1 times S, S stands for speed, and then add to that 1.8 times S times G, and S is speed, the G is the grade of the treadmill, plus then the resting component, all of these resting components for all these equations are always going to be 3.5 um, mLs per kg per minute because 3.5 is the average amount of oxygen that most people consume um, at rest. Right? So we have to add in the resting component so that we have gross VO2 and not the sort of net VO2 beyond rest. So this gives us total VO2, not just exercise induced VO2. All right, so. Each of these equations uh, has some limitations, some uh, sort of, if you violate these limitations, they, they become less accurate. So for the walking e equation here, um, the original research used speeds between 1.9 and 3.7 miles per hour. So if you go below that or above that, the equation is going to be less accurate. All right, so let's look at the running equation, very similar to the walking. So VO2 equals 0.2 now instead of 0.1 uh, times speed plus the um, 0 0.9 times the speed times the grade, plus the resting component of 3.5 again. And for the running equation, it is most accurate when you get past five miles per hour. All right, and so now let's do the leg, uh, leg cycling equation. So again, VO2 equals 3.5 um, mLs per kg per minute, plus 1.8 times the work rate divided by the body mass of the individual, plus 3.5 mLs per kg per minute for the rest. And again, every one of these has a limitation based on the, the research that was used to create the equation for this. It is most accurate between 300 and 1,200 kilogram meters per minute for the work rate. So uh, below that or above that is the, the equation is gonna be less accurate. For the arm cycling equation, fairly similar to leg cycling, we have the VO2 equals, and then it's actually not, a, they don't consider there being a horizontal component, so it's zero, so that's why there's a zero here. So you could just exclude this, but for the sake of filling in the table, I did put the zero here, but it's, so there's no horizontal component for arm cycling, but then you do three times the work rate divided by the body mass plus the resting component of 3.5. And for this, the accurate, accurate range is 150 to 750 kilogram meters per minute for the work rate. Then for stepping exercise, so this is like aerobic steps, um, we have VO2 equals 0 0.2 times the frequency with which you step, so how many times you go up and down in a minute, plus 1.33 times 1.8 times the height of the step, times the frequency of the step again, plus then the resting component of 3.5. And this is going to be most accurate between the stepping rates of 12 and 30 steps per minute. Just to kind of uh, point at what uh, some of these different letters actually mean here, uh, I mentioned them in the equations, but let's give a little more detail and give some units here. So again, the VO2 is always in relative units, relative total body mass. The S for the, um, the walking and running equations uh, for speed is in meters per minute, not miles per hour. The body mass is always going to be in kilograms, so we had body mass in both the leg and arm cycling equations. Um, the G, which was grade, um, is the decimal format of grades. So typically you'll hear somebody say, you know, the treadmill is at 5%, so you need to turn that into 
0.05 or the example I have down here, 10% would be 0 0.10. So just converting the percent to decimal and you have the grade in the walking and running equations. Um, the work rate, um, which we have in the leg cycling and arm cycling equations, um, in both of those is going to be kilograms times meters per minute. The frequency, the, the F here, um, the frequency of stepping is always going to be steps per minute. And the height of the step, the H, is always going to be in meters. So remember, you have to be working in the appropriate units in order to use the equations. Um, so I put a list of some uh, conversion factors you might want to be aware of uh, on this uh, slide here. Um, so please pause this and look over these conversion factors, um, uh, so I'm not going to go over each one, um, and see which ones you need for whatever equations you're doing. I also put some additional um, uh, simple calculations on this slide um, so that you can sort of take these calculations to a next level and apply them in different ways. If you're going to use any of these equations, you need to be aware of some additional assumptions beyond just the sort of rate of exercise um, that I already listed as assumptions uh, as, the, as the limitations on the first, um, first table there. Uh, so one of the big ones is if you're using a treadmill, so for the walking or the running equations, you should not have the person holding the handrails. If you do that, um, some of the uh, effort that they should be using in order to keep their body upright and move their body forward is now being done by the handrails. So it actually decreases the actual oxygen consumption rate of the individual when they're holding the handrails. Um, these equations assume that everybody has the same running economy or same exercise economy. Um, so if, for example, if you have somebody, say a trained runner, um, a, an athlete, they're going to be a little more efficient probably than the average individual. And so these equations might not work perfectly for them. It, it's probably going to overestimate the oxygen consumption that an athlete would do. Likewise, if somebody's really um, has really poor exercise economy for some reason, it's going to underestimate the amount of work that they're doing in order to do the exercise. All these equations assume that the person is in a steady state. And so um, typically it takes between say two to four minutes of doing the same exercise intensity for the person to get into an actual steady state. So this, these equations are not going to be accurate for the first you know, minute or two or, or maybe up to four um, of the exercise just because they're not in steady state yet. Their heart rate's still adjusting, their breathing rate's still adjusting, their metabolic rate's still adjusting, um, their oxygen consumption's still adjusting, maybe they have a little oxygen deficit still. Um, so until all those things um, get to the level they need in order to support the exercise aerobically, then the equations aren't going to be quite accurate yet. Um, this last one here hopefully is common sense, but the, the machine that you're using, so the treadmill, the bike, whatever it is, needs to be calibrated appropriately so that whatever you're typing into it um, as, you know, you want to do 10% grade, it needs to actually be 10% grade, not 9% grade. Um, if you, you know, the example here is if you put in 5% grade and it's actually 6% grade, it's going to decrease the accuracy of the equations on uh, just because the treadmill itself is causing some accuracy issues. Um, and then even if you do everything perfect, these are still estimate based equations. Um, so there's about a seven to nine percent standard deviation around these numbers that um, plus or minus that you should expect. So these are not perfect. They are estimates. Um, keep that in mind when using these in order to prescribe exercise or to calculate um, calories burned if you do some additional calculations or something like that. That was a very brief overview of these equations. Um, if you want to get some detailed examples as well as examples where you can rearrange this, so instead of solving for VO2 all the time, you can rearrange this to solve for speed if you know what the intensity in oxygen consumption is going to be, or you can solve for grade, or you know any of these different variables throughout this. I created videos um, showing pretty much every sensible um, way of using these equations I can come up with. Um, so there's one for each possible scenario of how to use these equations, and you can scan this QR code to get to that. You can type in this long link here to get to the playlist. Um, so it's a whole playlist of videos. I'll also put a link in the description below this video to the playlist where you can see all those different example calculations that I've done with these.